You know, these phones are pretty amazing. You can do almost anything on them, but sometimes I look at my phone and I kind of just wish I could go back in time and just have my iPod again. <laughs> I loved my iPod. I had an iPod video, which was the first iPod with video that you could watch movies, something totally new in 2007. Uh, you can listen to music on that thing. My best friend gave it to me the night before I went to Bible college, and that basically got me through that first year. It was very strict Bible college, so having a little oasis of movies and music uh, was very helpful for me. Uh, but one thing I also did on that thing was listen to podcasts. Now, back in 2007, nobody knew what a podcast was. Today, that's a little bit different, thanks to shows like This American Life and Serial and celebrities like Joe Rogan. Everybody knows what a podcast is. And there's one podcast that's gotten really popular amongst Christians. It's from a little publication called Christianity Today, and that is The Rise and Fall of Mars Hill. Now... There's a lot of strong feelings about this podcast. And to be honest, I have a lot of strong feelings about this podcast, but I'm going to try to keep this short. I'm expecting this to be a little bit long, but we'll see how it goes. Um, I've learned quite a bit, uh, not just about Mars Hill, because I was really familiar, I guess, to give a little bit of backstory on it. I'm originally from Seattle. Um, I grew up in a Christian home, very plugged into evangelicalism, what was happening and so I remember hearing Mark Driscoll's name in my teens, and I had friends who were really involved with some of the early stages of planting Mars Hill. And so I knew who Mark Driscoll was. Um, I started listening to his stuff pretty early on, um, watching his videos because he would drop them on YouTube, which was totally new. And uh, yeah, I just absorbed a lot of his teaching and I thank God for some of it. Um, there's, there's a lot that I learned from Mark Driscoll, but, uh, some of it I've learned to unlearn. <laughs> uh, but I say all that to say, I didn't learn anything new in this podcast. When I heard about it, I was like, I don't know what we're going to get out of this thing. Everybody has leaked all the information at this point about what happened at Mars Hill. Um, so when I heard Mike Cosper was going to be doing it, I was like, I don't, I don't understand, uh, why what's going to be new. Um, but there's actually quite a bit, um, not necessarily about the story, but a lot, a lot more about like what's happening in broader evangelicalism and like this celebrity pastor culture. Uh, so I kind of just wanted to talk about this for a couple minutes and explain some of the things I'm learning. Uh, I will say right off the bat, there's one really big positive that I see that uh, Mark Driscoll did and, um, you know, things that I'm going to be implementing even on this channel. Uh, and that would be that Mark Driscoll was super clear about what he believed and who he was and what he didn't believe. Um, now, I think there's a really fair argument to say he was too aggressive, <laughs> but uh, I think there's a lot of value in being abundantly clear about who you are, uh, what you stand for and what you don't stand for. And I mean, like even on this channel, you clicked on this video because you want to hear what I think about Mark Driscoll and Mars Hill. Uh, you don't want, you know, well, there's lots of different perspectives on this thing, this kind of like wishy-washy answer. And so I'm trying to think about, you know, my life, my ministry, where can I be more clear about who I am, what I believe in ways that are kind and loving, but also, you know, just clear. Uh, so that's one positive, but I'll say that <laughs> there's a lot more negative. Um, I'm going to try to do this quickly, but uh, one thing that I'm learning from this is to just to just not say that a pastor is good or that someone is a godly individual without like working alongside them. Now, uh, I don't think that I was uh, a Mark Driscoll. I guess I kind of was a fanboy, uh, but I remember being like, oh, I like him, but he's got, you know, this rough edge and this rough edge. And 
because of the circles I was running in and how I was brought up, it was mostly cussing and alcohol uh, that I was like, you know, those are big no-nos, but you know, like I, I like a lot of this other stuff. Um, I don't think I'm going to do that anymore with anybody. Now this has burnt me way too many times. Uh, not just like celebrity pastors, but in my personal life of pastors that I've known from afar or people that I've known from afar. And, um, you know, I would say like, oh, they're, yeah, they're great guys or like, that's a really good church. And then you find out something that happened there and you're just like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have promoted that person, that church. So I'm just not going to do it anymore. Uh, and that's something that I've learned from Driscoll is to just not weigh like the good with the bad. It's one thing for Cosper to do that with the story to kind of give, you know, the different perspectives of a story. But in real life, uh, you know, don't just be like, well, look at the salvations, look at the baptisms, look at all the good things that were done. If there's bad stuff, you got to deal with those bad stuff uh, and not just like sugarcoat it and be like, well, they're pretty good except for this. So I'm just done doing that. Uh, another thing is to treat people like people. And I know that sounds like the captain obvious thing to say, uh, but that's one thing as you're listening to this podcast, you can see very clearly that Driscoll would treat people like a means to an end. And, you know, I'm not going to get into his psychology. I don't know him, but you know, things like having people stay with him and giving guys rings to go marry their girlfriends. There, those were a lot of good things, but then you hear stories about, you know, him just kind of running people over when they got in his way or confronted him on something and he would throw them out the door. That is a manipulative tactic to get people onto your side and on board with where you're going. And then as soon as they show any hesitancy or confrontation to your leadership, they gone. Um, that's something that I want to make sure that I don't do in my life is to treat people like people, not like, you know, a means to an end. You know, we're all leaders, pastors or leaders trying to get people to a certain place. You know, we have a vision for the church. We want to see that vision fulfilled. Don't treat people like a means to that, especially young leaders, not to do that. And, you know, they're real people, real emotions, and you should be real friends with them, loving and compassionate, a pastor, shepherd, loving the sheep. Uh, so that's one thing I'm learning. Another one is that I'm done using some of the titles that, um, you know, this new evangelicalism culture just kind of uses. And this one, if this triggers you, I'm sorry. Um, but also, I don't really want to have like a whole bunch of discussion down in the comments about it. Um, just not looking for that. But I'm just done using titles like complementarian. Uh, my theology hasn't changed. Uh, I still believe that males are the ones who are supposed to be elders. That's that's how I see that text in First Timothy chapter three. Um, but I'm just done using that term because the way that Mark Driscoll talked about women, like, I mean, that story in, uh, I think it was episode three when he goes to like Ireland or Scotland or something. And he's talking about basically pressuring a wife to do, uh, some sexual things with her husband in order for him to get to church and get saved. And Christians laughing at that story. Like it's just gross. It shows how he viewed women. And there's just been a lot online lately about the role of women in the church and uh, from people that on paper, you know, if I was to say, yeah, I'm a complementarian, they would also be complementarians, but it's, it's just gross. And uh, I'm done using that word to describe my theological position. It's not biblical, so I don't need to. Um, and uh, I don't think it's helpful anymore, at least for me. And I think we put unnecessary barriers, restrictions on women in the church. And that's something I'm learning from this podcast too, is something that Mark Driscoll did at Mars Hill was putting these restrictions on women, how, how much they could do in the church that just aren't biblical. And unfortunately I've, I've done that in the past. So I'm, I'm trying to rethink that and process that. Um, but yeah, those are some of the things that I'm learning. I'd be interested to know one, are you listening to the podcast? Two, what are you learning from it? 
I, I really want to know. Uh, I think that it'd be good to have a little discussion about this podcast. I think it's important. I think everyone should be listening to it and kind of seeing just, you know, not just at Mars Hill, but how this kind of applies to Christianity in general, or at least conservative Christianity in general. Um, but yeah, if you like this video, like it, hit the button. Uh, if you like this kind of content, subscribe to the channel and I'll be back next time with another video, probably on Saturday with the marking up the word video. I'll see you then.